I think it's here. Beside me, I have a couple of huge boxes that just came in through the door containing probably the most exciting thing that I ever laid my hands on. A professional, real-life robot. So about a couple of months ago, Universal Robots reached out to me asking if I would like to check out one of their robots, and I couldn't say yes fast enough. They're so confident in how polished their products are that they sent over one to me, to someone who is completely inexperienced, just to prove a point. So, let's see what we can make it do. Ah. <laughs> oh, look at that, huh? So let's go see what's in the other box. So this is the controller and this is gonna be the touch interface. <laughs> look at that, it has a big red stop button too. Let's power this baby on. Oh, it's glowing. Okay, so now everything seems to be engaged. So let's give this a shot. <laughs> oh my God, it's barely audible. <laughs> zip, zip. Up, 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 up. I'm still so shocked at how quiet it is. Like literally when it's moving around, you can't hear it at all. Like I've literally had laptops that are louder than this. Man, seriously? Can't wait to program this guy. I spent some time learning the UI and tried some basic scripting. In a nutshell, you build a routine out of these action blocks where you specify what the robot should do. I like that it shows the expected robot position on the screen when you're planning out the moves. It makes it so much more intuitive. The entire system is really less coding heavy than I expected. There's an entire ecosystem of all sorts of attachments that you can get for your robot, depending on what you want it to do. This one, for example, is just a simple gripper. Besides these fingers and grippers, you can also get like vacuums and magnets and even welding machines. I'm not gonna lie, this guy was really growing on me. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! <laughs> scissors again, huh? That was immature. I want to shake your hand! So robots like these are called cobots, as in collaborative robots. That's because they're meant to work with humans in close proximity. That's why they must have all kinds of safety features, and this one is no exception. It can detect collisions, and in general, safety is really thought through. For example, the rounded body and sealed off joints make it impossible to get your sleeve grabbed or something. So, why do I want a robot? Two words. Motion control is a filmmaking technique. It's kind of like combining Robocop with a tripod, with a film camera thrown in. With a robot, you can get the camera to move in these insane three-dimensional paths that would be impossible otherwise. Some shots literally wouldn't exist if it wasn't for robots. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen my own attempt at a motion control robot. For this one, I'm using stepper motors, and they're just not powerful enough to do anything significant. And it only operates in two dimensions because I don't have any way to elevate that much mass fast. Anyway, the UR10, the bigger brother of the UR5 that I have here, is already used in studios around the world, so naturally I couldn't let this opportunity go to waste. But before I do, I need to attach the camera to the robot, so you guessed it, building montage. I thought about 3D printing a bracket, but uh, in the end I decided to make it out of metal because I didn't want to have any springy plastic in the system. I added some tape to not scratch up the robot. Unlike my janky stepper motor robot, this one uses strain wave geared motors. It's a kind of a high precision gearbox. They're mostly used in robotics because they offer very high reduction ratios and also zero backlash. That's why there's barely any sound and zero vibration. And trust me, the camera would show it. Man, it's hanging mid-air, but it's moving smooth like on train tracks. Okay, enough of the simple stuff, let's make something cool. This sequence was a bit tricky to set up, and I still didn't get the framing right, but it was such a surreal experience to have a robot film me in my own workshop. It's kind of like having your own personal camera crew. It might be a bit confusing, so here's how it looked from the side. It's not really technically challenging. I think the real limitation is my habit of thinking in static shots, because I usually shoot videos by myself. I think in the future we'll be seeing more and more YouTubers using such tools. The shots where the camera is rotating gives me this sort of music video vibe. Since the robot is moving in three dimensions, I wanted to recreate this rolling dolly shot. 
you can kind of tell that I'm moving my right arm with the tablet just for some more creepy dynamic lighting. One of the coolest features of this robot that really impressed me and what makes this robot so easy to configure is the free move, aka the compliant mode. So basically, when the free move mode is enabled, you can just grab onto the robot and pose it with your bare hands. <laughs> so literally, the only qualification you need to have to operate this world-class robot is to have hands. And even if you don't, maybe you could just like use your neck and sort of like pinch it and move it around somehow. Moving on. Here's a few more shots that manually would be very difficult to pull off. I'm totally gonna use this as the channel trailer. Once again, and with a different angle. I'm not used to it, but you kinda need to choreograph your moves with a camera motion, so it took a few tries. Robots like these are often used in commercial video shoots. So here's a close-up of my Doomfist gauntlet. Man, it got beat up over the years. Overall, the shot looks good, but at some points there's a tiny bit of wobble and I don't know why. In the phone footage, I can see that I moved the light in the path of the camera and the arm bumps it, so I think that's related. I've learned so much, but I'm only scratching the surface. Motion control with a real robot is kind of a dream of mine, so I mostly wanted to try out that, but think about all the other things it's capable of. They're already doing manufacturing and other tasks, but give it a few years more and we'll start seeing domestic consumer robots because even now they're easy enough to use, I think the limiting factor is mostly the price. So yeah, about that. <laughs> These robots are just so outside my budget. Um, this UR5 over here, um, it costs around $35,000 without any grippers. Now don't get me wrong, it's cheap for what it is. I mean, there's a reason why it's hailed one of the best cobots out there, but uh, you know, it's still clear that their target audience is factories and companies that can actually make money off of it and not hobbyists like me. The only way I see myself getting one of these robots is probably like finding an old discarded one and repairing it. But then I would probably have to go on some sort of an adventure, uh, meet all kinds of colorful characters, uh, teach it what it's like to be human and about feelings and all that. And then I would probably have to fight a big boss in the end. So basically what I'm saying is that the old Robbie over here, he gets to go home now. <laughs> no? Sorry about that. So I would like to say thank you to... Seriously? What's up? Really? No, I'll bring the tools. Uh, see you there. I'm getting him now. You. It was you all along. You know, it's not here anymore. The council will hear about this. Make a move then, Pinchy. Activate! La bomba, Tuikuchi! Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you had fun and maybe you learned a thing or two. Uh, without you, this would have not happened. Like quite literally, I'm not blaming you or anything, but uh, yeah, no one would have reached out to collaborate or anything if you would have not been watching me. So thank you for subscribing and being a part of this community. And of course, thank you to Universal Robots for thinking outside the box and making stuff like this happen. That being said, that's it for this time and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs>